Solving quadratic equations flowchart. Here's a page full of quadratic equations, 21 of them to be exact. All quadratic equations have solutions. Even those equations without real numbers as solutions can have complex solutions or roots that are composed of partially imaginary numbers. During my algebra teaching career, I have taught five ways to solve quadratic equations. During this lesson, you'll be given a tour of the flowchart I've developed to determine which of these five ways to use to solve your particular quadratic equation. This is the chart we will use to make decisions about which method to use and even solve several of the 21 quadratic equations we saw earlier. The first equation we'll look at is this one, x squared equals 81. We go to this first decision node diamond at the top. Does the equation in standard form have a b value of 0? Since in this equation there is no b or linear term, and a linear term would be x or something times x in this equation, we answer yes to the question and go to the right, shown by the blue arrow. Now we're at solve the equation using the square root method box. Here's our equation to solve using the square root method. We take the square root of both sides of the equation, and we're left with this for our answer, x equals plus or minus the square root of 81, and that will be x equals plus or minus 9. And that can be rewritten in set notation as x equals negative 9 comma 9 inside brackets. And now that we've done this, we can take our answer, x equals negative 9 and 9, and go all the way to the finish. The blue arrows show the flow path we took. Now we'll look at our next quadratic equation, n squared minus 2n equals 15. We start by asking the question, does the equation in standard form have a b value of 0? Since we have minus 2n, the answer to this question is no, and we take the blue arrow to the left. Then we ask the question, can you or do you want to solve by graphing? We can try to graph everything, but we'll say no this time and head off towards solving by factoring. If you're skilled at factoring and the equation is factorable, it may be faster to solve by factoring than by any other method, including graphing. Here's our equation to solve by factoring, n squared minus 2n equals 15. In the flow chart it says attempt to factor, since not all equations are factorable. To solve by factoring, we need to solve for 0 on one side of the equation, and we can do that by subtracting 15 from both sides of this equation. 15 minus 15 cancel on the right side equals 0. We bring down what's left, n squared minus 2n minus 15 equals 0. Now we start to find the factors. We know that the factors of the quadratic term n squared are going to be n and n. That's pretty easy. Now we have to find the factors of negative 15, that added together equal negative 5, negative 2 rather, because we have negative 2n. And since negative 5 and a positive 3 are factors that add together equal negative 2, we place those factors inside parentheses to complete our factors. Since the left side of the equation equals 0, whenever this factor on the left, n minus 5 equals 0, and also when this factor at the right, n plus 3 equals 0, we break these factors into separate pieces, n minus 5 equals 0, and also n plus 3 equals 0. So solving for n on the left equation, n is equal to 5, and also for the equation on the right, n is equal to negative 3. And after checking our work, we can rewrite our answers in set notation inside brackets. Here, back to the flow chart, we have placed our answers x equals negative 3 and 5. We then move to the next node, the decision node, were you, able, were you able to solve by factoring? Since the answer is yes, we continue in this direction all the way to the finish. The blue arrows show the flow path for arriving with the answers n equals negative 3 and 5 to this equation. We'll now look at our next quadratic equation, 2x squared plus 9x minus 40 equals 0. We look at our first decision node. Does the equation in standard form have a b value of 0? Since b equals 9, the answer to that question is no. So we follow the flow chart to the left to the can you or do you want to solve by graphing decision mode. With the graphing calculator, we might want to say yes and solve or try to solve by graphing, but we'll go to the left again to attempt to solve by factoring. Here's our equation to solve by factoring. 2x squared plus 9x minus 40 equals 0. In the flow chart, it says attempt to factor since not all equations are factorable. I'm going to try to factor using the box method, which we've set up here with the quadratic term 2x squared in the upper left, and the constant term negative 40 in the lower right cell. 
The factors of 2x squared are easy, 2x and x. I tried factors of negative 40 in different combinations and could not successfully factor. The closest I could get was quantity 2x minus 5 times quantity x plus 8. But that gives us minus 5x in the upper right and 16x in the lower left. And that combines to 11x when we need 9x, so that doesn't quite work. So now we're back to the flow chart, and the blue arrow goes to the were you able to solve by factoring node. Now at this decision node, do you notice that there are two places we can go with a no? From here we can go up to the right with a dotted arrow and attempt to solve by graphing after all, or we can go to the left to the is b an even number question. And what is really being asked is, is this problem a good candidate for completing the square? And it, this one is not for two reasons. First, b is 9, an odd number, but just as important, the quadratic coefficient 2, as in 2x squared, does not have a coefficient whose square root is a natural number. Completing the square is always possible, but would be messy in this case. So our answer being no, we go down to solve using the quadratic formula. Do you notice that the quadratic formula is our last option? It's here as the last option because it works every time, even when nothing else works, and it only has one outlet over to the finish node. The main drawback to the quadratic formula is that all other of all other methods, if they work, are faster and have fewer opportunities for mistakes, which is another reason I like to save the quadratic formula option for last. Here we are again, this time to use the quadratic formula shown here at the right. To do this, we need to identify a, b, and c. a is 2, b is 9, and c is negative 40. So we're going to place each of these numbers into the quadratic formula, a, b, and c, in their proper places. To ensure accuracy, I like to create a version of the quadratic formula with parentheses that can be filled in by numbers. I find this helps to avoid opportunities for mistakes. And here is the quadratic formula with all the numbers filled in. Now this simplifies to negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 401 over 4. And that simplifies to negative 9 over 4 plus the, or minus the square root of 401 over 4. And since the square root of 400 is 20, we know that the square root of 401 is slightly over that, so we can say that x is approximately equal to negative 2.25 plus or minus 20 over 4, which is 5, or negative 7.25 and 2.75. And since it's at the bottom of the screen, I'll put the answer up here. And now back to our flow chart, we place our solutions, x is approximately equal to negative 7.25 and equal to 2.75 here below the calculation box. And with our answer in hand, our two solutions, we continue with the blue arrow all the way to the finish. Here's the next equation we'll take a stab at. 2n squared plus 48 equals 0. We asked the first question in the first decision node. Does the equation in standard form have a b value of 0? Since there is only a quadratic term and a constant term and no linear term, the answer to the question is yes. So we go to the right following the blue arrow to the square root method. Do you notice that from this calculation we, were, we will be able to get an answer that there's only one way to go from here to the finish? Here's our equation to work out using the square root method. Again, this is 2n squared plus 48 equals 0. The first step is subtract 48 from both sides of the equation. 48 minus 48 cancel on the left side. We bring down 2n squared equals negative 48. Next step, divide both sides of the equation by 2. 2 over 2 cancel on the left side to equal 1. We bring down what's left. n squared equals negative 24. Is it possible to find the square root of negative 24 or of any negative number? No. Not unless you can go to imaginary numbers. So our solution is plus or minus the square root of 24 times i which we can simplify by taking the 4 outside of the radical where it becomes 2. So n can also be written as plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6i. So here's our answer. n equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6i. Then we follow the blue arrow all the way to the finish. Now we'll look at our next equation. Negative 16x squared 
plus 64x equals zero. This just happens to be an equation that can be used to quantify projectile motion, the altitude of objects changing speed due to the influence of gravity, speed position. We go to the first decision box. Does the equation in standard form have a b value of zero? Since we have 64x, the answer is no, so we go to the left, which we can trace with the blue arrow. Can you or do you want to solve by graphing? We'll say no again and go to the left in an attempt to solve by factoring. Here's our equation, negative 16x squared plus 64x that we'll attempt to solve by factoring. The equation is already solved for zero, which is what it needs to be like to solve by factoring. My preference is to have the leading quadratic coefficient to be a positive number, so we'll multiply that equation by negative 1 to do that. What it does is change all the signs of the terms. The zero is unchanged, of course, because negative 1 times 0 is still 0. So we now have 16 squared minus 64x equals 0. Our greatest common factor of these two terms is 16x. So factored out, this is what it looks like. 16x times quantity x minus 4 equals 0. Now we take the left piece of the expression on the left and set it equal to 0, and that's 16x equals 0. Then we take the right side of the expression, and that's x minus 4 equals 0. For the left equation, we have x equals 0. And for the right equation, we solve for x by adding 4 to both sides of the equation, so x equals 4. Then we can write our answer and set notation. Our answers, 0 and 4, mean that the object leaves the ground level at time equals 0 and hits the ground again 4 seconds later. We put our answer here in the flow chart. Since we were able to solve by factoring, we take the answers right through the where you're able to solve by uh, factoring decision node all the way to the finish. Now we'll look at our last equation, x squared plus 8x plus 52 equals 0. We go to our first decision. Does the equation in standard form have a b value of 0? Since the b value is 8 and not 0, the answer is no, and we go to the left to the can you or do you want to solve by graphing node. We'll say no because we still want to go old school without the graphic calculator and get to the attempt to solve by factoring box. Here's our equation, x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals 0. We look for the factors of x squared plus 8x plus 52 equals 0. The x and x are easy. But what are the factors of 52 that add up to 8 because we have 8x? The closest I can get is 4 and 13, but those will add up to 17x and not to 8x. So I would say that this appears not to be factorable. So we go on to the next decision node. Were you able to solve by factoring? And here at this box, there are two ways we can go with no. We can go to the left to uh, is b an even number, or right up to the right to solve by graphing. We'll go to the solve equation by graphing box. Now to solve by graphing, we take the zero at the right and change it to y. Now we go to enter this. y equals x squared plus 8x plus 52 in the graphing calculator in the y equals function editor. And here's the graph of the function. We see the graph doesn't touch quite the x-axis, so there are no real solutions to the quadratic equation x squared plus 8x plus 52 equals 0. So now we go to the decision node. Does the equation have real solutions? Since the answer is no, we can go to the left over here to the decision node. Is b an even number? And since b, which is 8, is an even number, we answer yes. Attempt to solve by completing the square. Here we are to attempt to solve by completing the square. The first thing we'll do is clear out the 52 from the left side of the equation by subtracting 52 from both sides. 52 minus 52 cancel on the left side to equal 0. So we now have x squared plus 8x equals negative 52. To make a square of the left side of the equation, we need to divide the linear coefficient 8 by 2, which equals 4. And to find the number we need to add, we take 4 squared, which equals 16. So now we must add 16 to the left side of the equation to get a square. And likewise, of course, we have to add 16 to the right side to keep the equation balanced. We bring down 
x squared plus 8x plus 16 equals negative 36. Now we can rewrite the left side of the equation as quantity x plus 4 times quantity x plus 4. And we can rewrite it again as quantity x plus 4 squared equals negative 36. Then we take our next step by taking the square root of both sides of the equation. Now we have x plus 4 equals plus or minus the imaginary number 6i. And solving for x, we have x equals negative 4 plus or minus 6i, which is our complex number solution. We place our answer next to the attempt to solve by completing the square box, and then we go to the onto the next decision node by that says, were you able to solve by completing the square? And since the answer is yes, we take that complex number answer all the way to the finish. If we had not been able to complete the square, we would have gone to the left and had another opportunity to solve by using the quadratic formula. During this lesson, we used a flowchart to sort and solve quadratic equations into five different methods of solving. We solved our attempt to solve using all five methods. We found imaginary and complex solutions in addition to real number solutions. I don't know if this chart is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but I hope it was helpful to you. My wife tells me I deserve a gold medal in geekery for putting this together. And here is that gold medal. This has been Solving Equa Quadratic Equations Flowchart. Thanks for viewing.